This looks like a nice spot to film. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. This is Alan Stewart and today we're going to be talking about accommodation and logistics for hiking the Kamana Portal. So I've come to the park today to record this video. I wanted to make this video back in January this year of 2020 when I hiked the Kamana Corner myself. Uh, but unfortunately all this COVID stuff went down and then I didn't think it was relevant to make this video. So back in June of 2020 this year, the Japanese government um, made a campaign called the Go To Travel Campaign to allow Japanese citizens and residents, including foreign residents, to travel around Japan and that's going to give them up to 50% off on their travel expenses. So I think this video is now becoming relevant for those who are living in Japan and want to do some traveling and who may have been considering the Kamana Kordo. If you are not a Japanese resident, don't worry. Um, this video also applies to you if you're an international traveler. So I should mention that all the information I'm going to give you on this video today is based on my own experience of walking the Kamana Kordo and also on the research that I've done. Uh, to walk the Kamana Kordo. Um, so I think I've found some good ways that you can even save a little bit of money. So I just want to give you guys a good overview of what your accommodation options are for hiking the Kamana Kordo and what to do with your luggage while you are hiking the Kamana Kordo. I'm going to leave some timestamps in the description below. So if you wanted to skip ahead, please do so. Otherwise, let's get into today's video. So the Kamana Kordo is a network of ancient pilgrimage trails that span all the way from Kyoto Prefecture all the way down to Wakayama Prefecture. There are five trails or five routes that make up the Kamana Kordo and you have the Nakahechi route which is the most accessible route and the most popular route. For this video I'll be focusing on your logistics and accommodation for the Nakahechi route. The Kamana Kordo is a UNESCO World Heritage Site um, the UNESCO part of the Kamana Kordo consists of Mie Prefecture, Nara Prefecture and Wakayama Prefecture. So if you hike the Kamana Kordo and also hike um, El Camino de Santiago or Way of St. James in Spain, then you can become what's known as a dual pilgrim. Now, I'm not a dual pilgrim myself, but I've walked the Kamana Kordo, so I'm halfway there. So once you become a dual pilgrim, uh, you get a certificate and I think there's something else you get. I think you can get a medal too. Anyway, just a fun fact and something to strive for if you're a keen hiker. So what is the goal of Kamana Kordo? Why walk the Kamana Kordo? So the goal is to seek rebirth in this lifetime while performing prayer at each of the shrines. Um, now you don't have to be reborn into this lifetime when you walk the Kamana Kordo. It's totally up to you. Um, but your other goal, if you want to challenge yourself, is to visit all three grand shrines of the Kamana Kordo. So this is what's called Kamano Sanzan, and that consists of Kamano Hongu Taisha, Kamano Nachi Taisha, and then Hayatama Taisha. Kamano Hongu Taisha, well that, that's the shrine itself, but that's quite famous for its big Tori Gate, which is located on the former site of where Hongu Taisha used to be. And then you have Nachi Taisha, which has the beautiful pagoda with the waterfall in the background, and then there's Hayatama Taisha, which is located in Shingu. And typically, after you've done the Nakahechi route and arrived in Nachisan, then you can take a bus all the way down to Shingu to see Hayatama Taisha. The Nakahechi Trail is 68 kilometers long from Takijuri Oji all the way to Nachi Taisha. So what you would typically do to walk the Nakahechi route is take a bus from Ki Tanabe Station all the way to Takijuri Oji, which is where the trailhead is and then you walk or hike for several days um, up to Hongu Taisha and then down to Nachi Taisha. That would typically take you between five to seven days. So if you had three to four days, you can just do a few sections of the Nakahechi route because the Nakahechi route is very accessible by bus. So if you didn't have three to four days, 
You could even do an overnight. I'd recommend staying overnight in either Kikatsu Ura, Shingu, or maybe even the Hongu area. So to help you with your planning, I would highly suggest going to the Kimono Travel website, which is run by the Tanabe City Kimono Tourism Bureau. They are the official source of the Kamada Cordel, so you can get all your information from there. You can, you can get uh, downloadable maps, bus timetables, um, accommodation information, things like that. So there are several accommodation options that you can choose from. So you have things like ryokans, uh, you can even sleep in a temple, Buddhist temple if you want to, you can go camping. But I want to talk about the two most practical options that I think would be best for hiking the Nakahechi route. And they are Minchuku and hostels or guest houses. So first let's talk about Minchuku. So a Minchuku is a Japanese guest house. It's like a bed and breakfast and it's normally run by the people who own them. And you normally get your own private Japanese room and the Minchukus, they, the people normally feed you there. So you get breakfast, lunch and dinner. You will get your lunch um, on the day you go hiking. Um, in a form of a bento box or a Japanese lunch box. So you can just take that on the trail um, and then enjoy it while you're hiking. Well, by the way, guys, if you want a guide on how to book your accommodation through the Kamano Travel website, check out Chris Adanya's video. The link is in the description below and also in the card right here or up there, depending on where I'm going to put it. Um, they take you step by step through the process of booking your accommodation. Um, for the Nakahechi route. So check them out. That's a really good video a really good resource to go to So Minchikus are great if you want sort of like a authentic Japanese experience and you don't want to worry about Thinking about your breakfast lunch and dinner. The other alternative is to stay in a hostel or a guest house so you would find most hostels around the Hongu area and the Yunomine Onsen area. You are not going to find them anywhere else along the Nakahechi route. So yeah, the way you hike the Nakahechi route is going to be a little bit different. On your first day, you would take a bus like normal from Kitanabe Station to Takijuri Oji. You then walk to your next destination, which might be Takahara or Chikatsuyu, depending on where you want to finish your hike for the first day. And then you take a bus to Yunomine Onsen or the Hongu area. You would sleep in your hostel and then in the morning you would take a bus back to where you finished your hike the previous day. And then you would continue your hike and repeat that process. Now if you do want to stay in a guest house or a hostel, um, make sure you bring your own food. There are a few um, places where you can get your food along the Nakahechi route. There are not many cafes or restaurants around uh, so that's why it's important to bring your food so you can make your breakfast, your lunch and your dinner. The hostels will have their own fully equipped kitchens. You can make your own food. Apparently you can camp along the Nakahechi route. I was considering doing this myself but I decided not to because I'll be hiking in winter and I just would rather have been enjoying a nice warm bed and an onsen at the end of the day. So if you did want to camp, um, I think this is a better option if you're camping between um, or every other season apart from winter, so spring, summer and autumn. Now I don't know where exactly the campsites are along the Nakahechi route. I did see a few around Kwayu Onsen. Now there are websites in Japanese where you can book a campsite um, but because they're in Japanese I didn't really know how to do it. Now the good thing about campsites is that they're relatively cheap, cheaper than a guest house or hostel and you can even hire camping gear but I haven't done that before. I, I don't know what it's like, I don't know what type of camping gear you can get, I don't know when it's available, if it's available. So I'm not really an expert on that but I just want to say apparently you can do some camping so uh, please contact the Tanabe City to Kamano Tourism Bureau if you want more information on how to go camping. Now there's one important thing I should mention to you guys. Um, make sure you book your accommodation way in advance. You need about a year to book your accommodation if you are planning to hike in either spring, summer or autumn. If you're hiking in winter it's a bit of a, a quieter season so um, you probably don't need to book your accommodation as far in advance. 
Now, I hiked the Kamana Kōrō in January of 2020, and I booked my accommodation in September of 2019. So that was a few months in advance. So you might want to book your accommodation between 6 to 12 months in advance. I think summer is the peak season, so make sure you give it a year because vacancies fill up really fast. Now, if you're a Japanese resident and you want to get your discount for hiking the Nakahechi route, book through the Kamano Travel website, or if you're going to stay in a hostel, you can book through either Agoda or Booking.com. Now, the next thing I would like to talk to you about is what to do with your luggage while you are hiking the Kamano Koro. Now, you have two options. You can either store your luggage somewhere or you can send or deliver your luggage to your accommodation. Now let's talk about luggage storage options. So probably the best option to store your luggage would be at the Kamano Travel Support Center near Kitanabe Station. It's only about a minute's walk from the station. So you can store one bag of luggage for 500 yen per day. Now if you had two bags, it's gonna be a thousand yen per day um, for your luggage. Now this might be a bit of a problem if you're not going to go back to Kitanabe Station at the end of hiking the Nakahechi route. So your next best option might be to use a local luggage shuttle service to shuttle your luggage from accommodation to your next accommodation. So for example, you would shuttle your luggage from Takijuri Oji at the trailhead to your accommodation in Nonaka or Chikatsuyu depending on where you're going to finish your hike for the first day. Now this is a very convenient option. Um, I would say that the average cost to send your luggage using a local luggage shuttle is about 3,300 yen. Now if you wanted to add another bag to that it's usually the same price so you could probably get two bags for 3,300 yen um, and then every other bag is going to be cheaper. So you know for example if you added three bags to that same order 3,300 yen um, in total, total, you might be paying 4,500. So it's going to become cheaper the more bags you add to the same order. That's a good thing about that. So this is a very convenient option if you're traveling in, let's say, a group of people, and then you can all have your luggage every day at your accommodation. And all you need to do is bring uh, a day pack while you hike the Nakahechi route. So if you're going to be using a local luggage shuttle, it's important to book your luggage service at least 10 days in advance and you can book this through the Kamano Travel website. Now if you didn't need your luggage every day you could send it from Kitanabe Station to uh, Kikatsu Ura. The Kamano Travel Support Center can help you out with that. It's gonna be cold, I'm gonna put my jumper on. The next best luggage delivery service you could take advantage of is called the Kuro Neko or Taku Bin delivery service. If you live in Japan, you may have seen that symbol, that yellow and black symbol of the cat carrying another cat. So that represents the Taku Bin service. So Taku Bin service means like door to door delivery and you can send your luggage from anywhere in Japan. So you can send it from hotel to hotel in Japan. Um, you can send it from the airport to your hotel in Japan. I was in Osaka. I sent my luggage to Yonomune Onsen, J Hopper's Hostel, and that cost me about 1500 yen. And I stayed at the J Hopper's Hostel every night in Yonomune Onsen. And then on my second last day, I sent my luggage to Kikatsu Ura, which is where I would finish my hike. Now, let's do a quick comparison of how much it would cost to stay in a minchuku versus a hostel. So in this comparison, we're going to be looking at a five day and four night trip of hiking the Nakahechi route. Let's assume that one USD is about 100 yen, just to keep it nice and simple. So let's look at a minchuku. A minchuku is going to cost you about 9,000 yen per night. And if you multiply that by four nights, that's 36,000 yen. Now meals will be provided, so you don't need to worry about that. On average, a bus fare would be about 750 yen. So if you take the bus four times, that's going to be 3,000 yen. And all that is going to come to a subtotal of 39,000 yen. If you wanted to use a local luggage delivery service, 
the average cost to send one to two bags of luggage is about 3,300 yen. So for five days, that's about five deliveries, and that's going to come to a total of 16,500 yen, or about 165 USD. So if you add the cost of your accommodation, your bus fares, and then a local luggage delivery service for every day, that's going to come to a total of 55,500 yen, or about 555 USD. Now let's take a look at how much it costs to stay in a hostel. So if you stay in a dorm room in a hostel, it's going to be about 3,500 yen. Multiply that by four nights, that's 14,000 yen. You will have to pay for your own food. And I think if you budget 3,000 yen per day, which is kind of a generous amount, if you multiply that by five days, it's 15,000 yen. You will have to take the bus a lot more compared to if you were just staying in Michigan. So you probably take the bus about eight times. So 750 yen by eight trips, that's 6,000 yen. And all that comes to a total of 35,000 yen or 350 USD. Now, if you wanted to use the Kuro Neko or Taku Bin service, I've calculated that on average, if you wanted to ship your luggage from Tokyo to the Hongu area, that's going to be about 4,000 yen. If you wanted to ship it back to Tokyo, it's going to be another 4,000 yen. So let's just say that's a return trip from Tokyo to Hongu, so it's going to be 8,000 yen or 80 USD. Now, if you're buying your accommodation cost of the hostel, your meals, and then your bus fares, and also a Kuro Neko service, that's going to come to a total of 43,000 yen. So what's interesting here is that if you look at the cost difference between a Minchuku and a hostel, it's only about 4,000 yen, or about 40 USD. So for you, it may be worthwhile just paying the extra 4,000 yen to stay in a Minchuku, and that way you don't need to worry about food or taking the bus back to your hostel or guest house every day. Now, if you look at the cost difference between using a local luggage shuttle and a Kuro Neko service, then you can see a difference of 125,000 yen or 125 USD. Now, I think that if you're traveling in a group, then staying in a Michigan is a good idea because for one, you don't need to worry about getting everyone to the bus stop on time to catch the last bus back to the Hongu area if you had chosen to stay there. Number two is that all your food is provided for, so that's one less thing you need to worry about. Number three is that if you're planning to use a local luggage shuttle to send everyone's luggage to the next accommodation, then it's going to become cheaper for every bag you or, uh, put on the same order. And if you are traveling solo or with a partner and money is not an issue, then a Michiku is just an easier way to go. Everything's all taken care of and provided for. Now, should you stay in a hostel? Well, if you're on a bit of a budget, or if you just simply wanted to be in the Hongu area, or the Yonomine Onsen area, and walk the Kimana quarter from there, then sure, I think a hostel is a very viable option. So I hope that these suggestions have been quite valuable to you. So let's wrap up this video with the me in the past. So the good thing about walking the Nakahechi route, or any of the other routes in the Kimana quarter, is that you don't need to pay any permit fees or entry fees to walk it. You can just simply book your accommodation and walk the Nakahechi route. Now if you think about these costs, these are just normal living costs you'd normally pay for if you were traveling in Japan. So you're always going to be paying for your accommodation, you're always going to be paying for your food and then your transportation. They're always just normal travel costs you pay for. So there's not, it's not really going to cost you extra to hike the Nakahechi route. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out all the resources I've linked to down in the description below. Um, if you want more detailed information on anything about Kamana Kordor or the Nakahechi route or any other route in the Kamana Kordor, uh, make sure you get in contact with the people at the Kamana Kordor travel website. Uh, they are the official source of information um, on the Kamana Kordor. So that's gonna wrap it up today there, guys. If you found this video helpful in any way, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're into sort of like hiking tip videos, some gear reviews and coffee, that's kind of what I do. So hit the subscribe button if you're into that kind of stuff. I hope you all you guys are taking care of yourselves and don't worry, you'll get to Japan soon. Anyway, you guys have a good day and I'm going to enjoy this sunshine. See you next time.